Hello, Rasmus. Hello, Hi. everyone. Uh, our uh, theme is uh, framework days. Yes. Uh, can you tell us your opinion about frameworks? Thank you. They all suck. <laughs> 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 But so while they all suck, everyone needs a framework. What everyone doesn't need is a general purpose framework. Nobody has a general problem. Everyone has a very specific problem they're trying to solve. And a general purpose framework, while it can solve it, it usually solves it in a way that you get so many other things that you don't need that ends up being done on every request. There are frameworks that check to see which database you're using. So you have a request, hey, which database are we using? MySQL, okay, let's load the MySQL class that loads up this thing, that loads up this thing, that initializes the ORM and tells it to use this database. Two milliseconds later, the next request comes in, hey, which database are we using? Still MySQL, right? <laughs> and every request, we're asking all these questions, there's always hooks and all these things, dynamic decisions that need to be made on every single request that does not change from one request to the next. If you haven't hooked this particular hook in the API, you d haven't hooked it two milliseconds later or two milliseconds after that. So usually what happens when a big company, when a company grows and they start it with a general purpose framework, they start optimizing things by ripping stuff out and they just tear the framework apart to the point where they could never upgrade. So if there's a new version of the framework, it doesn't really matter because they've modified the damn framework so much that they're stuck on the version they're on. And I think that's a huge problem. So I, would, I wish that the framework guys would have some way of doing a production push where you fit, configure, look, I'm using the auth module, I'm using MySQL always, I'm using this particular thing and this particular thing and nothing else. And then the framework should have some kind of push this and only push the components that you need to the production servers. So none of these other runtime decisions ever get made. Of course, you can go back and, and change things and say, now I want to use this hook. And fine, then you push that code to the production servers. But the dev environment and the production environment shouldn't be the same thing in this case because it's a scripting language. This, there's a lot of things that happen at runtime that shouldn't be happening at runtime in, in a case like that. So, that's one thing I see a lot, is people taking a general purpose framework and stripping it down. The other thing I see are people starting with no framework and then adding pieces of modular frameworks, just pulling out one piece of a framework and using that, and pulling out another piece of another framework maybe and using that. But there are many frameworks where you pull one piece out and the whole thing goes <laughs> right? <laughs> there are some frameworks that are okay, that, that are modular enough that you can pull things out, but many frameworks are so interconnected that it just doesn't work. Um, usually I, I tell people to look for a targeted framework. So if you have a problem that looks a lot like a blogging problem, maybe WordPress should be your framework, right? It's not a great framework, but if it's something, if, you're doing, if your problem is very close to something WordPress can handle, chances are you'll be using most of WordPress. There won't be all these other general purpose things that you won't touch. And that way you have a better targeted framework and you'll be able to upgrade as WordPress upgrades. Or you might be using something like Drupal. So if it's a more content management that fits more in the Drupal side of the house, then maybe Drupal is a better framework for you because it is more targeted than a general purpose framework. <laughs>